You're live with BBC News. US Central Command confirmed today it had shot down another anti-ship ballistic missile that was flying towards the USS Kearney from Houthi-controlled Yemen. The ship was operating in the Gulf of Aden. A lot of the focus so far has been on the US-UK response to these attacks. But Reuters is reporting that China is now getting involved, citing four Iranian sources. The report says officials from Beijing have been asking Iranian counterparts to help rein in the Houthis. The discussions took place in recent meetings in Beijing and Tehran. The attacks have raised the cost of shipping and insurance for Western companies, that much we know. But this is also a route that is used widely by ships from China who are exporting to Europe. And we all know what sort of pressure the Chinese economy is under right now. Beijing does have some leverage too. They take 90% of the Iranian crude that was exported last year. Uh, let's bring in then Neil Thomas. He's a fellow for Chinese politics at Asia Society Policy Institute's Center for China Analysis. Welcome to uh, the program. Um, it's really interesting this because <laughs> we've been wholly focused on, on the Western companies. But of course, uh, a large part of the Chinese economy is still dependent on exports and they come on this route. That's true. Uh, it's certainly something that concerns international trade writ large, not just the Western countries. There are some reports, however, that the Houthi rebels in Yemen are allowing Chinese flagged ships to sail through those contested areas and that the Chinese kind of commercial navy isn't experiencing the same type of difficulties. But still, like creating that instability, creating that threat of something going wrong in a Chinese ship or Chinese trade routes uh, coming under attack or you know seeing the danger plus you know therefore the insurance premiums rise more generally that's certainly uh, a threat to china's interests as well in mm. the longer term yeah because i mean just just on that point quickly i mean presumably not all chinese exports travel on chinese flagships exactly so it's a problem that is maybe less direct and less present for Chinese importers and exporters and the Chinese economy writ large. So you haven't seen uh, quite as strong or immediate a reaction from the Chinese government, but uh, perhaps it's an indication that that is beginning to change. We've seen before, in fact, we saw it last year, didn't we, the sort of influence that China has over some of its allies. Um, they bro brokered a, a deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran, for instance. So, so am I right that they, they do have significant leverage over Tehran? They do have some leverage over Tehran. That at least is clear. I mean, China buys a huge majority of Iran's exported oil, which is obviously a lifeline for a regime that's under significant U.S. and international sanctions. Uh, and you know, China is you know, trying to increase its own presence and diplomatic uh, power within the Middle East. So China has some leverage and some uh, intentions and some interests there. But at the same time, I mean, Iran also has its own uh, interests and its own kind of allies, if you like, various rebel groups and other uh, organizations in the region that it has to look out for. So it's not necessarily a complete convergence of interests or a complete asymmetry of power where China can simply say something uh, to Iran and that would be enough to uh, stop the Houthis from threatening international shipping. So it'd be really interesting to see just how much influence mm -hmm. China has. So this will be a big test of its uh, leverage over Iran and whether this leads to any kind of calming of the situation. If it does, that's a big diplomatic victory for China, and that'll be seen across the region and across the world. If it doesn't make any difference, well, that's going to make China question potentially what it's getting out of its relationship with Iran. And we could even see some type of uh, economic pressure being put on Tehran by Beijing. Yeah. Now, while we have, we have you, uh, can we talk about another issue? I mean, we've been learning today that a British man who disappeared in China five years ago uh, has been jailed on espionage charges. In fact, he was, he was jailed two years ago. Uh, Beijing's foreign ministry confirmed that Ian Stones, a businessman around 70 years old, was jailed for five years by a Chinese court in 2022. He was found guilty of being bribed into providing intelligence illegally, said the Chinese, by external forces. The Chinese court tried the case strictly in accordance with the law, fully guaranteed the various legitimate rights of Ian Stones and arranged for the UK side to visit and attend his trial. China is a country governed by the rule of law. So 
Sir Ian Duncan Smith, former Conservative leader, said that he'd raised this issue with the British government uh, over a number of years, Neil, um, and nothing had come out of it uh, until we got this news today. And, and it just begs the question what the right strategy is, because there are others being held in China. The, the policy seems to be that they don't like, uh, the, the British government don't like publicity um, while the negoti negotiations are ongoing. Does this suggest that actually maybe publicity would be better? It's hard to say definitively. It all depends, I think, to some extent, or it depends to some extent on the nature of the charges, the nature of different cases. But it's certainly true that we've seen in the past that the level of publicity attached to some of these detentions of foreigners in China has arguably contributed to their eventual resolution. Not necessarily their quick resolution. If we remember the case of the, the two Michaels, the two Canadians detained after uh, Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou was detained in Canada. Uh, it took them three years to be released uh, by Chinese authorities after Meng had been released uh, by the Canadian authorities. But there was a huge amount of attention on that case. And now both the Michaels are back home in Canada. Mm. So it did lead to a resolution. Uh, and arguably that publicity did contribute. Interesting. Neil Thomas, thank you very much for your thoughts this evening. Uh, we will see uh, what comes of that Chinese leverage over Iran.